I'm gonna try to carefully unzip this. I don't want to unleash the glitter demon. Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. Today I'm going to be reviewing and roasting some of my hand-sewn costume items. I mean, it is October, it is the season for costumes, so why not? Now, a couple years ago, I did a tier ranking of my DIY costumes, whether they were for Halloween or other events. This is not going to be quite the same as that because this time I am going to be looking specifically at sewing skill, sewing ability. I am by no means an expert in sewing, um, but I'm not a complete beginner either. I feel like I'm at a point where I know enough to know what I don't know, and I know enough to know when something is just bad. So this will not be an exhaustive list of all the costumes that I have ever made or ever put together myself. This is just what I have in the closet here with me today. So let's dive in. This is a skirt made out of an old bedsheet that I threw together a couple years ago just as something to wear to the Renaissance Festival. I think I wore it over a white dress and then what else did I wear? I don't remember, but I used it as an overskirt. I did not have my serger at the time, so I believe I finished my seams, yeah, just with a little zigzag stitch. So other than the fact that the seams look a little messy inside, this looks pretty good. The tension looks fine. I don't really like the color. I could just dye it another color. And then the only issue I really have with it is the opening in the back. I did not do a zipper, because again, this was just a costume piece meant to throw on over top of something else. So it's kind of just got a weird <laughs> opening with a couple snaps here. And it looks a little bit messy if you look on the inside. And then I just have a couple buttons. So it's fine. It got the job done. I want to give this a three out of four. It's really just the opening in the back that bugs me, but it really doesn't need a zipper, you know? Yeah, this is fine. All right, perfectly adequate. Moving on to something I made just this past spring. This is another overskirt. Again, meant to just be a costume piece, but I did put a lot more care and effort into this one. Partially just having a serger has really enabled me to make my stuff look way cleaner and more professional. I know you don't need it to finish your seams, but for me personally, I really love that look that it gives. It just looks very polished. So another overskirt. This, I actually did not really have enough fabric so I had to improvise and add the maroon along the bottom, but I think it's a nice touch. It does fit a little bit loose around the waist. I think that would be easily fixable if I just undid the top of the zipper and moved it over a bit. Do I want to go through all that trouble? Eh, not right now. <laughs> and also who's to say that in a year or two, I won't want that extra wiggle room around the waist, you know? Or maybe if I'm just having a very bloated day or I have a very bulky dress that I want to wear this over, having that little bit of extra room might be nice. I don't really think I wanna detract points for that because otherwise I think this turned out so beautiful and so clean. There's a little bit of a funky spot down at the end of the zipper. Zippers are so tricky though. Like if you know, you know, zippers are awful. I love them, but they're awful. <laughs> so I do want to give this one a four out of four. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I need more occasions to wear it. This feels like a fall item. I should just, I should just wear this one day. Oh no, fix yourself, come on. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Okay, going along with that is also this green cape. I made this in the same video this past spring. Again, I did not have quite enough fabric, so I really had to cut some corners literally and get creative with the placement of my fabric and my pattern to make it work and make it fit. And over the shoulders and the length and everything actually worked out fine. The only place I ended up having a fit issue due to lack of fabric was the hood. I just cut it a little bit too small and I don't have enough fabric to recut two new hood pieces. I've been thinking about just making a long strip to insert down that middle seam of the hood. I would have to undo and redo all of the edge binding, which would be annoying, but it is fixable, I think. Again, just like with the skirt, I can't be bothered right now. And it still is usable as it is. The hood does fit over my head, just barely, <laughs> but it does fit. I am gonna dock one point from the overall score just because I didn't anticipate needing the hood to be bigger. So I'm gonna give this a three out of four. But again, just like the skirt, 
I absolutely love how this turned out. And now we are into cloak appropriate weather. It's been really lovely and really cool outside, so I might have to break this out one of these days. I'm not going in chronological order. These are just kind of as I find them. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're gonna jump back in time. I made this as part of a Little Mermaid costume my senior year of college. Oh, that's the butt, this is the front. So throughout high school and college, I did a little bit of sewing here and there, but I didn't really, really get into sewing until probably the last three to four years. So this is something that I just happened to make for myself during that period of really just dabbling in sewing as a complete beginner. And for a complete beginner, this is not bad. So I went to the thrift store and Thankfully, they had a pair of scrubs in this very aqua sea foam green color. I turned the scrubs into a skirt and then used this shimmery, I don't know, is it organza? This shimmery fabric to insert down at the bottom to make it kind of look like a mermaid tail and then up around the top to kind of look like the, um, the frill that she has around her tail. What is that called? It's not really a fin, it's just a frill, right? I don't know. Overall, really good for a beginner. It definitely worked for the costume, it looked how I wanted it to look. But just looking at it, I can definitely see some rough spots. You know, my seams are a little wobbly. And uh, you know, it looks pretty messy on the inside. There are some spots where the tension just isn't right. It looks like I caught the fabric within itself here. Yeah, it's a little bit bunched up there. Oh, and it had pockets, that was nice. So it has a few funky spots, which I think would knock it down to like a two out of four. Am I just being nice because this was an early project? Like it's not super well made, but it's not total garbage. You know what I mean? Oh, that looks pretty bad back there actually. So maybe this is a one. Ah, that feels like I'm being so mean to my past self, but I wanna base it on like, if I made this today, I would give this a one out of four. So again, it got the job done. I loved that costume. I was very proud of it and I am proud of past me for making this, but it's a little rough. And then jumping ahead to 2020, I believe, I decided to remake the top of my Little Mermaid costume because previously I had just used a little purple bandeau bra, which was fine at the time, but I wanted something that was a little bit more coverage, a little bit more detailed. So this is a little bralette I had and just wasn't using. So I added again, the purple shimmery fabric on top and painted these little um, foam bra inserts to look like shells and tacked them onto the front of it. And I actually think this is pretty well done. Looking at it, I can't see too much that I would do differently other than the fact that it doesn't fit. <laughs> it really needs like a clasp in the back or some more elastic because it's just really, really tight. I don't think I could get into it today if I tried. But on a skill basis, I do think this is pretty well done. Nothing really jumps out at me that is an issue. I'm gonna give it a three out of four though, just because I think where I'm at now, I could make it look just a little bit more polished and I might make a few design changes. Like I said, with adding elastic or a clip in the back and I probably would forego the pearl. I don't know, the pearl looks really random. I might have to put this in storage with sentimental items because I'm not gonna wear it now. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. <laughs> oh, what is that? Just a random hanger. Okay, hello. And then let's jump back again to 2017, I wanna say. Another Little Mermaid costume that I sewed myself. Listen, she was my favorite princess growing up. What can I say? I wanted to make her village costume and I have a light blue shirt that goes under this. It's just folded in in there. I don't feel like getting it out because it's it's just a generic long sleeve blue shirt that I thrifted. I didn't make that part, but the bodice and the blue skirt and the bow I did make out of just whatever fabric I had on hand. So the bodice is made out of an old pillowcase. This actually looks pretty decent. Again, the seams are not that clean. I didn't have a serger. I do think I would do a much better job today if I were to do this. The top along the neckline is a little bit rough, so I'm gonna give the bodice a three out of four. I just think I would do more to stabilize the neckline and I would add boning now. I don't think I knew to even consider that at the time. And then and the skirt, this was a bad fabric choice, but again, this is what I had on hand. The bow looks really good. The skirt is okay. I did use bias tape along the edge, which was kind of unnecessary, but it looks really pretty and clean. But it's a little bit funky here along the waistband. I don't know if that's a tension issue or it just looks like the fabric stretched. So I'm gonna give this a three out of four as well. Definitely an improvement in my sewing from a few years prior when I made the tail, but this one definitely still had a ways to go. 
but it's an improvement. And then another princess costume in 2020 as well, later into 2020, I decided that I wanted to dress up as Belle. Never had any particular affinity for Belle. I just had a blue dress that I needed to repurpose. So the top of this costume is a repurposed blue dress I wasn't wearing. The bottom is some fabric from Walmart, just, you know, whatever poly cotton blend they have in stores. And then this is uh, an old shirt I just chopped up into an apron. Now the thing with this costume, not only was was it kind of a janky thrift flip? I also made it in like two days. It was less than 48 hours that I spent making this. And given the skill set that I had at the time, that was really pushing it. I think today I could definitely do a little bit better in the time constraints that I had at the time. The neckline's a little bit wonky. I did not understitch. I didn't know to do that. I think I also would have just made a facing instead of using bias tape because the bias tape just kind of pulls at it. Along the back, the tension is totally wrong along the zipper, which I remember I did know that. I remember at the time I knew the tension was wrong, but I was out of time before I needed this to be done. So I was just like, it's fine, let's go. Also, the neckline was too too big so I ended up having to add these weird little darts last minute that look really goofy. I had to hand sew those in. Again, it got the job done, but it looks real goofy up close. And then on the inside, the seams are a little bit messy. I didn't even bother doing a zigzag stitch over them because of the time constraint. And then the apron is just janky. But again, like I said, it was like I had 10 minutes left. So I had an old t-shirt in my stash and I just cut out a rectangle and made two little straps and called it a day. Oh, the hem looks a little funky too now that I'm looking at it. So this, I think I want to give this a one out of four. Again, there was a time constraint, but if I had the same time constraint now and was making this costume, I still think I could get at least a two or a three out of four product versus a one out of four. <laughs> this is pretty bad. And then the following year in 2021, I made my Plague Doctor costume. I have the mask hanging up on the wall and I don't feel like taking it down for this video. So, you know, here's a picture of it. Um, the mask turned out great. I think I need to maybe fix up a couple things on the strap, but I also don't really plan on wearing it again, most likely. Anyway, the cape though, this was the fully sewn, no hot glue part of the costume. The problem that I had with this was the gosh darn lining fabric. Some jerk had the audacity to go watch the video where I made this costume and get mad at me for making the lining pink because that wasn't accurate. And I'm like, sir or madam, are you aware that this is a costume and it's just for fun? And I even state in the video that it's not historically accurate. Neither is it full personal protective equipment. This is not pink. Check your eyeballs, mate. This is not pink, this is maroon. Anyway, this fabric is terrible. This fabric is awful. It is so slippery and frays terribly and just does not want to be worked with. It's the same fabric that I use at the bottom of this skirt and oh, it's awful. I at least had the good sense to use interfacing when I put it on the skirt for this. I didn't know what I was getting into. So just looking at it, it looks really good. It looks like the tension is about what it needs to be. Maybe no, the tension's a little bit off, especially down at the bottom, but I think that is due to the slippery maroon fabric. So I'm gonna give this a three out of four. Honestly, I did my best. <laughs> the only real issue I have with it is if I try to wear Wear it. This fabric is so slippery that it just falls right off my shoulders. The hood falls right off my head. So it really is better for just standing there and taking a picture. It's not really great for uh, wearing out and about. I don't know if this really counts as a costume, but I don't have anywhere to wear it for real life. So it's gonna count as a costume. I'm gonna try to carefully unzip this and just show you, but mostly I'll just be putting up pictures because I don't I don't wanna unleash the glitter demon into the room. This is my Halloween glitter dress that I made last year out of dollar store mesh fabric. And I freaking love this dress. It's so pretty, very messy because it sheds glitter like it's its job. And I wanna give this one a three out of four. Overall, it fit really well. I even have boning in the bodice to help keep its shape. The sweetheart neckline turned out really good. I mean, especially compared to this bodice that I made before. Like this one looks pretty rough. This one looks really good. I remember the main issue that I had with it as far as skill and execution of the whole thing was just along the back the tears 
pictures didn't quite match up after I inserted the zipper. So it didn't quite line up along the back, which as something that I'm not really gonna be wearing very often or ever. <laughs> I'm not pressed about fixing it. And just given how difficult this was to work with as a medium, I think it turned out really good. I really like this. So I'm hoping that maybe there will be a time and place for me to wear it. I don't want to wear this anywhere that I am then responsible for the glitter that I shed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. That's why it lives in this bag. And then the last item I think I'm going to cover today. Oh lord he coming. This is my goblin mode dress that I made based on the delightfully creepy and questionable dress Julia Fox wore to last year's Oscars or uh, I don't know one of those events celebrities go to that none of us actually care about. I just loved her dress so much I was like I need to make this myself. The problem is my fabric choice and nothing will ruin a good project quicker than the wrong fabric choice because skill wise I think I did a good job on this but it doesn't matter how well you execute something if the fabric is wrong for the project because this is upholstery fabric. Wearing this dress, I definitely felt like I was just wearing a lazy boy chair. I had a lot of fun making this. I still am very proud of how it turned out and really enjoyed this project, but I am a little bit disappointed looking at it just like I said, because of the fabric. I think I wanna give this a two out of four solely because of the fabric choice. Oh, I even, look at, look at me, look at me go. I even have a lining in here. I forgot about that. Well made, just the wrong fabric. Doesn't even fit on the thing. Literally, it feels like a couch. So those are some of my self-sewn costume items. These are definitely some of my favorite sewing projects to do. Leave a little jack-o-lantern emoji, emoji? What the frick is an emoji? Leave a little jack-o-lantern emoji down in the comments if you're still watching. I know it's a little on the nose, but it's October, okay? Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.